Copper Rose works in the area of reproductive health and women's rights by breaking taboos that hold women and girls back from fully actualizing in any culture. The name Copper Rose is a representation for women in Zambia to be appreciated and treated as valuable assets as copper is to the economy. Thank you for coming to the stage, Faith. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So last week, I was in Ndola. Ndola is a town in the central region of Zambia. It's about four to five, 450 kilometers away from Lusaka, where I'm based. And I was coming back from a training where I was um, training some healthcare providers on the new policy that the country has released on age of consent for adolescent sexual reproductive health. So I was on a bus, and midway through the journey, the bus stopped. We were told we'll have to wait a couple of hours until the mechanic would come and repair it. So I sat in my seat trying to find something to entertain myself and I looked through the window. I saw a bird and when I zoomed in, this bird was actually building a nest. The bird would go from the bush up into the tree which is 50 uh, meters high and um, create uh, build this nest. Uh, an Australian author who writes a lot about birds says it takes about one to two days for a bird to complete building its nest. I was inspired by this because it made me think about what other nests are in our lives, in my life. If you look at your phone, there are so many apps that you use, so many um, social media platforms that we have now. I'm sure Mark Zuckerberg took one to two days, or <laughs> however he would um, um, explain that, to build Facebook and other people, so to build the apps that we use. This completely resonates with me. In 2015, I started Copper Rose Zambia. I was only 20 years old at the time, and I just wanted to make a difference in my community. Copper Rose works with young women and girls in the community to educate them about sexual reproductive health, advocate for family planning services and information for adolescents to help prevent pregnancies, teenage pregnancies. We're going into our third year now and I've managed to reach out to more than 15,000 young women and girls. Most of the times people ask me, okay, so what does Copper Rose even mean? Copper Rose is a symbolic name. Copper, I come from a country where copper contributes 76% to the, gross, the uh, GDP. And for us, this means so much. And just to make young women and girls believe that they are valuable and they are just as beautiful as the rose is at the core of my work. This year's forum theme is the power of proximity. And I would like to borrow what Brian Stevenson said in the opening plenary, that we need to be close enough to feel the hug. We need to be close to the marginalized people to understand the challenges that they face. I started Copper Rose on my university campus. I went to students, fellow students, collected door to door, went, do went door to door to collect some donations just to be able to purchase sanitary napkins to help keep girls in school. I did this with the people who were around me. Now, as social entrepreneurs, young social entrepreneurs, the fear is usually how to start because we don't have the capital. Maybe we don't know the right people or we think we don't know the right people. But Using my story, I think the best place, and also using the forum theme, the best place is to start at the closest place, which is the nearest place that you are, in your community, in your town, in your province, in your country. And that's how I started Copper Rose. So proximity is an asset. Proximity is an asset for social entrepreneurs because it helps you, if you're selling a product, you sell it to your best friend, you try to sell it to your neighbors, <laughs> you try to sell it to your friends at church, or just people who are around you. Because they are usually the first people who will believe in your mission, who will believe in your goal, who will believe in, in that product that you're trying to market and sell. There's an African proverb that says, 
umwana ushinda atasha ni inokulia, which simply means somebody who doesn't move or travel will strongly believe that their mother's cooking is the best. <laughs> On a lighter note, I think, <laughs> I think my mom's cooking is the best. But <laughs> so the fact that you, in as much as proximity can be an asset, sometimes it can be limiting because we need to learn from experts and professionals who, are, who may not be proximate to us. Before I came to the school forum, I'll be honest with you, I thought that I had an incredible story, not until I met these emerging leaders. When I came to the school forum, I met people who have dedicated their lives to empower and develop, use their expertise to empower and develop young people like myself and these emerging leaders. And for the last five days, I've been learning from these people. More, I've learned so much more than what I have learned in the last three years. <laughs> so I would like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is even if you start with passion and even if you have passion, to be honest, passion may not be enough. You need to learn from the experts. You need to learn from professionals. You need to learn from people who are doing the work that you're trying to do or have sim a similar goal with you. And for me, I don't even have a background in public health. I don't have a background in, I'm not an expert in, in a particular subject, but I, all I started with was passion. So this is what most social entrepreneurs have. Just a few days ago, I received an email saying I had been accepted for my master's degree at Michigan State University. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, I would definitely love to go there. But unfortunately, a scholarship that I, was, I had applied to has recently withdrawn from funding mm. students at the university. So this for me means, this, this entire story for me means that there's so many people who are, so many young social entrepreneurs who are passionate, who are willing, who are committed to changing the narrative about Africa. And in order to close this distance and close this proximity, to close the distance and proximity, all they need is le uh, knowledge, skills, and expertise. Lastly, I'd like to go back to the story of the bird and the nest. I'm very passionate about this nest. I love this nest. I love the work that I do. And I think about it every day. I plan for it every day because I want to grow a nest so big that it fits one million women and girls. Because my person, personal mission is to reach out to one million women and girls in Zambia by 2021. And for as long as I continue to see women and girls underprivileged uh, and disadvantaged in terms of education, sexual reproductive health services, you will see me there in the front lines, trying to use whatever resources I have, trying to use whatever skills and knowledge I have to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. This, this is such a challenging topic globally. Um, the taboos, the um, mystery around it. Um, what kind of challenges have you faced? What kind of resistance have you faced when starting Copper Rose or, or, or starting to scale Copper Rose? There's so many challenges that I've faced, but one of the the most outstanding ones is just being able to stand in front of people in the community and talk about a taboo subject. Those, I remember vividly one time I was conducting a training on how to make reusable sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. I, was, there was a, I was having a session with people between the ages of 35 and 40, both male and female, mm -hmm. because we're talking about, that was not the main subject, we're talking about the whole sexual reproductive health as a, in general. Right. So. I was talking to, I, was, I started addressing the issue of menstrual hygiene. And the women were like, no, don't say that. There's men in the room. Let the men leave, and then we can continue this discussion. Mm. So some of, those challenge, some of those comments are the things that make me continue doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because 60% of the women and over in the world are women. Women who are menstruating, mm -hmm. have menstruated, or will menstruate. So why is... Why do we want to not talk about this important subject? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. We have time for one or two questions 
for faith? Any hands? Hi, your work sounds amazing, Faith. Um, I was curious, in the United States, President Trump has said that the United States will no longer give financial support to health groups in other countries that promote or perform abortions. Has this had any impact on your work, on your fundraising, on other groups in Zambia doing this work? That's a good question, thank you. Well, yes, it, it, does, it has affected our work and also other organizations in my country, but we're still at the moment, currently, some of the projects that Coporas are running is funded by um, other government institutions. So there are still people who are willing to support and fund uh, projects around um, abortions, access to contraceptive use for young people. And we're trying to leverage on the existing support at the moment and also looking for other ways that we can fundraise, creating sustainable projects that can you know, continue the projects that we're already running. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you.